Hi everyone, welcome back to the uh, Retro Bat Build series. Everything you need in, in one place. Um, obviously, I haven't made a video for probably a week or two. Um, yeah, apologies for that. I'll be back now. Um, yeah, it was uh, my wife had actually injured her neck and um, obviously couldn't work, couldn't pretty much do anything. So, been a bit manic here. Um, she's still obviously struggling, um, but she's got some medication now. So hopefully, I'll have a bit more, a bit more free time to make some videos. So apologies for that. But back now. Um, and this is what well, video 10 in the series um, so without further ado let's crack on we're gonna add another system there we go let's bring these up so for this one we're finally gonna do MAME um, so obviously for those that know um, multi arcade machine emulator basically all your arcade machines it's probably the most popular the most well-known arcade emulator out there obviously we've added uh, Final Burn Neo previously <clears throat> now we're gonna add MAME so as you can see here it's a pretty big file. It's 10 king, well, nearly 11 gig. So um, it'll take a little while to download and a little while to copy over. So, but I will talk about that in a second. So let's just do what we normally do. Open up the zip file after you've downloaded it. Go into your RetroBat folder, wherever it may be, into your ROMs, and there's simply a folder called main. Um, should be empty at the moment. So we're just gonna go in here. Um, Control A to select everything click drag and let go uh, password should be the same as normal so um, rb hyphen build also with, with the capitals there and then an exclamation mark <clears throat> and now that's going to copy over it should take a minute or two because also it's quite big um yeah i just wanted to come on to that as well because i had also i've got plenty of positive comments um which is great thank you guys that kind of you know spurs me on to do more had a few negative comments um, some a little abusive, um, but, um, but anyway, th I think the main thing that upset people was the use of Mega. Um, as I said before, the these aren't my downloads, these are ones that I found over time and just kind of made a note of. Um, so I haven't chosen to use Mega, um, you know, that's just kind of where they happen to be. You know, I'm not linked to them, I don't, I'm not using some kind of affiliate link or making any you know, profit or benefit out of it. I mean, my channel itself is not even monetized, so I'm not even making anything out of YouTube. I'm literally just doing this to share knowledge and sort of help people out. So, yeah, so I think using Mega can upset people because um, uh, I guess if one, from a free account, you can download stuff. It's not too bad on small files, but downloading something like this um, can obviously take a while and there's limits per day. Um, and they kind of like try and push you towards buying an account so you can download more, which, you know, people choose to do that, they can, but you should be able to do it for free if you're patient enough. Um, so this is the stuff on the Mega website that I found. So for a free account, um, they do limit. So they work it out. It says here, so for free users, the amount of data that is downloaded from your IP address in six hours is limited. They don't have a fixed limit. They say it depends on, so yeah, it depends You know how, how busy their infrastructure is, whereabouts you're coming from, um, all this kind of stuff to work out kind of a limit on the fly. So it's not like, like you, you know, you've got one gig per day and that's it. It kind of it varies, I guess. So one way of getting around this, obviously, if you've got use of VPN, or even you can find a free VPN solution, you could, you know, sort of um, spin up a VPN connection, start downloading. Once you reach the limit, disconnect and reconnect the VPN, and when you do that, you get a new IP address. Um, and then, in theory, you should be able to carry on downloading. So I think at the moment, I mean, myself, I haven't used Mega too much, but if you download stuff, you reach a limit, you then have to wait until it basically says you can carry on. Um, so the other thing to go along with that, I'd recommend a download manager because um, quite often you can put a download in the queue and it'll auto retry for you and it'll keep it in there and it'll basically resume where it left off. Although I think Mega does that anyway. But anyway, um, so this is what they do, yeah. So, so obviously it's a free account, it is free at the end of the day. And when you start for a free account with Mega, you get 20 gig free storage. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it's free and obviously going to push you towards paying for stuff because otherwise they go out of business. You know, like, any business is in business to make money at the end of the day no matter you know how nice they seem or how aggressive <laughs> in some cases they're in it to make money they, you know they can't just give everyone in the world 20 gig free storage for free they've got to pay for it somehow so i mean i know it, it does put a bad taste in some people's mouth but like i say it's not me i haven't chosen to use mega it's just where they are i mean if people can suggest other free online storage places um where these type of files might be found let me know i'll have a look i'll see if i can find similar or the same set and start using them going forward and maybe look at replacing some of the links in the previous videos 
Um, but yeah, I mean, just you know, Mega seems very popular. There's, it's where a lot of this stuff exists. I know it exists in lots of other places as well, but the stuff that I found is in Mega. So please, please don't aim any any uh, sort of negativity to me. It's just you know, it's not choice. It's just where they happen to be. Um, so yeah, that was that really. Uh, so let's check on. Right, it has finished. And the other quick one was as well. I think I had a I had a negative comment around the BIOS pack that I leave. I leave a link to. Um, and obviously, sharing the BIOS pack, I can't do myself because you know a lot of the stuff in there is copyrighted, and I'll get in trouble. So the link I provide is actually to someone else's YouTube video, and it and you know I've downloaded from there myself. It does you know works fine. Um, I've downloaded the packs for both uh, Retrobat and for uh, Batasira. But they do they're a bit cheeky in the fact that you have to sort of watch it. They go to the website and you don't get the link to download unless you subscribe to their channel. Um, and I had a comment. Um, but I think the person thought it was me and that you had to subscribe to my channel to get the download link. But just to be clear, it's not me. I'm not hosting BIOS files. Um, it's not my YouTube channel that you have to subscribe to to get the link. Obviously, it'd be great if you subscribe to my channel in general. But, but for the BIOS link, again, it's, it's, it's someone else's YouTube video, someone else's YouTube channel. They have a website behind it where they host these BIOS packs. And in order to get a link, you need to subscribe to their channel. And that, you know, so again, it's not me. Please don't aim anything at me. I'm just providing a link. Someone else's site. If you don't like how they do it, you know, that's fine. Don't use it. Have a quick Google, you know, things like um, the archive, uh, internetarchive.org or archive.org. Um, is a good source for downloading that kind of stuff. I'm sure you can find the BAS packs or BAS files that you need just with a quick, quick Google search. I was just providing that one because I used it and it seemed quite handy. So yeah. So yeah, apologies. Um, that's kind of a... <laughs> that a bit over i mean yeah like i say it's not nice getting negative comments and i you know trying to do this to help but i just wanted to address them quickly i tried to address them in the comments but it's hard to kind of get get over the message i think just typing in text so i thought i'd say it here quick i also had another comment about me me getting off topic so <laughs> i'll get back on topic and we'll finish what we're doing so we came here to do main so right that's all copied over like i say there's a whole bunch of so all the games are in zip format in here we're gonna have the game list and the artwork etc um so we've got images, video, and you will notice for MAME, some of them have separate folders, um, and that's because uh, some of the, well, I say the more modern games, or you know, the last 10, 15 years, where arcade games were developing, um, having the, the data or the, you know, the code for the game on ROM chips, on circuit boards, just, you know, either, you know they get so big, that would be expensive or you know difficult to do, so they started saving some of the games onto either CDs, laser disc images, or hard drives inside inside the arcade cabinets. So that's what these are. These inside here, these CHD files, are either hard drive images or disc images that go with the game. And CHD is a format uh, created by by MAME, <coughs> and it's um, compressed hunks of data. That's what it stands for. So it's basically a one-to-one -one image of the disc or a hard disk that's in the arcade machine and it is compressed but it's you know a lossless compression so you don't, you don't they don't lose any data or quality it just it's, it's the minimum size so it's possible and you'll notice so there's blitz there not this you know matters but just from information uh, and there'll be a blitz.zip so that's the main game it's tiny the majority of the game is stored on that image file and there's a few other you know, gauntlet is here there's a few others, uh, Killer Instinct 1 and 2, uh, Street Fighter 3, that has a CD image, that's quite small, it's 30 meg. Um, I think some of others are quite big, we'll see, uh, they can get to a gig or more, depending on the game and the age of the game. So just in case you're wondering what those are folders for, that's what they are. So anyway, we've got everything in there, so let's close this and close this, come back up to the top of our Retrobat folder, launch Retrobat. And with any luck, and drag it into view. He says, and if you go look, main straight up. So again, this is yeah, just under 650 games. Again, it's a kind of a best of collection, you know, and working collection. Obviously, because you know, if you get a full main set. Yes, it's got a couple of thousand or a few thousand games in it. But like I say, some are going to be rubbish games. Some don't emulate properly. Some might have no sound. Some might have graphical glitches. Uh, 
this is kind of the best of, you know, most popular, best games, fully working, etc. So, uh, let's go and look in here. So, same format as always, menu on the left hand side, all the logos are there, all the artwork is on the right hand side, pause on the game, and you get the little, uh, little video clip. So, like I said, just adding main in this video, just because I want to get back quickly, make a quick video. Um, so I said, like I said, it's been a while um, and then I'll look to add some more systems in, in the next video this is quite a chunky one as well and like I said I'm going to look at the, uh, the online storage and see if there's a better solution than Mega see if I can find it somewhere else because um, <clears throat> again with this one it's, like I say nearly 11 gigs so with Mega it might take you a little while to download unless of course you use a VPN trick um, I mean on that as well I do remember whether they still do it um, I think it's the Firefox browser now comes with a built-in VPN so you have the option to basically you know, start a VPN connection within the browser. So whether you can use that to bypass the IP address restriction, you know, that six hour check, you might have to do that. So something something worth looking at. Um, but anyway, so let's just have a quick flip through here. I think looking good. Just trying to find a game. There you go, Bomb Jack. Let's, uh... and again, this one, because it's MAME, it should just use RetroArch. Shouldn't need to install any external um, emulators. We should be all good to go. Then we see we've got the arcade bezel coming up on the edge of the screen. It's doing the uh, system check. You know, just like if this was a physical machine in arcade, when you, you switch it on for the first time in the morning, it goes through and does a self check. Hopefully, won't take long. Then I can skip it as well. Looks like it's going now. And the only, only other thing, uh, the comments, um, there was a comment around sort of, I think part of the same one, the, the guy talking about Mega, talking about Retro, retro, retro Bat and how it's free. And it's like, yeah, absolutely, it's free. You know, I'm not making, like I said before, I'm not making any money out of this. I'm not. You know, I'm not. You know, there's no way I can. Like I say, you know, I'm not not using any affiliate links like some people do. I, my YouTube channel isn't monetized, so I'm not getting any money from the views. So, um, yeah, Retro Batch completely free. I'm not making it. You know, I don't make it. You know, the, there's a fantastic team of guys that make it. Do it for free. So, like I said before, and I think on the first video, when you download the uh, the main emulation station, the, the Retro Bat install. They do have an option there to donate if you want to, to you know, as small as large you want, or no don donation at all, just download. So if you do appreciate the retro about work, you know, feel free to donate, donate there. Um, like I say, just to, just the point in, in the comments, you know, I'm not making any profit or anything, or any gain out of this at all. So like it's just sharing knowledge, just trying to help people out. Like I said, I've been doing this quite a few years now. Um, I know those people want to get into simulation and don't necessarily have, not really tech savvy or don't really have the knowledge I guess, you know, PCs, computers in general, let alone um, emulation and, you know, ROM sets and BIOS versions and you know, all the stuff you need to kind of know to get up and running. Although, obviously, RetroVat takes a lot of that headache away, you know, automating as much as possible. So, anyway, you see the game's running there. All good. I haven't got keys, map, but there we go. Credit. What is the start button? Oh, that's the fast forward button. Anyway, so you can see that's running. It uses a built-in RetroArch emulator. And we're all good. So let's come back out here again. So we've got, like I say, yeah, Final Word Neo, who again is another arcade emulator. I think the, the difference is that, from what I've seen before, is MAME is more focused on the kind of exact emulation, so it's a completely replicated game, um, now which sometimes might you know, be in result of a lesser performance, whereas Final Bird Neo was more focused on speed and performance rather than a hundred percent accurate emulation, which I quite quite like because because some of my favourite games are kind of the Street Fighter games and they all run really well, really quick and snappy in Final Bird Neo. To be fair they run fine in MAME as well, but um yeah I just find that the uh, uh also the, the fighting games like you see on screen now run better in Final Bird Neo. But obviously MAME has a much bigger ROM set collection so it's nice to add both, just to, just so you've got the option. And like I say, I think these are fairly similar ROM sets. 
yeah, it's five sixty in there and six sixty in there. So there'll be a lot of lot of duplication because. Um, what I was reading on this set is that it's a best of collection, and I can't see it's the best of collection applied to both. If that makes sense, so it was a script that uh, took took a full set of Final Fantasy Neo, and then copied out the best of games, and then it's done the same thing to Main, taking a full Main set, and then taking the best of games, and that's why there's a, you know there's a hundred more games in the Main because basically the Main's a bigger set to start off with, so that script is going to match more games. Um, but yeah, it's basically so you have a bit of overlap there, but you might find that you know some games work better in one than others. So you know, just always find find the best. So you got you know got the option if you play a game, you know, find your favourite game in Final Burn. Doesn't quite work properly. Find the same game in Main, and you might find it works works fine. So anyway, rambling on again. So that is for the video. Just adding Main. So I'd like to be back ASAP with uh, another video and adding some more systems. So we're up to over 4,000 games now. I'm pretty sure that's, yeah. Just over 4,100 games. So I'm going to keep going. My, you know, the idea is to add as many positive systems as possible. Um, I think I've got a, a lot of the most popular systems covered now. But I'm going to keep going. I know there's some large systems that aren't on there yet. Things like Saturn. Um, a lot of the disc-based games. Also things like, um, like PlayStation. We've got, what do I add here, like 10 games. Actually, we can expand that out. So, being disc images and ISO is a lot bigger. So, again, that might rely on finding a different online um, cloud storage solution that's not mega. Because you know, so we basically we basically need a uh, free online uh, cloud storage system or service that doesn't limit your downloads and doesn't have a you know a silly small amount of storage available. So, anyway, without further ado, I'll, I'll sign off there. Thanks for watching. Obviously, please like and subscribe. Um, please continue to comment. Obviously, like I said, in the comments on, uh, in the description, I've got the, the Facebook group and I've got the uh, Discord server as well. You know, sometimes people putting comments on the YouTube um, channel, it's hard, hard to uh, to track, especially when then you reply and someone replies again. You don't always get notifications. So, if you want to sort of chat, ask questions, it's, it's a lot easier to come and do it on the Facebook group. Again, you know, just trying to help people out. There's no sort of profit in it for me, no gain. Just you know, trying to build a bit of community. And help people out that need it. Same on Discord. I know not everyone's a big fan of Facebook uh, for privacy reasons, etc. So Discord seems a bit more um, suitable to some people. Like I said, so I've got I've got both. Feel free to jump in and um, have a chat. Uh, so I'll leave it there for now. Everyone, thanks for watching, and I will catch you on the next one.